Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... The gentle and gradual warmth of Christ's love brings about change much more effectively than intimidation or force. These words remind us that God's Holy Spirit brings about change from the inside. Just as our hearts need to be cleansed, so also does the Holy Spirit bring us to understand God's will for us. The service will begin with this opening hymn. Good morning, I'm Pastor Barry Williams from St. John Lutheran Church in Madison and St. Paul Lutheran Church in Tilden. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 29. The vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment 
taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should say of its maker, He did not make me? Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, He has no understanding? It is not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, where the Apostle Paul writes, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its, its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives must submit everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself. Let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is corbain, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our text for this day is from Mark chapter 7, which includes these words in verses 5 through 7. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, 
Why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the midst of chaos, you grant rest. In the middle of struggle, you provide refreshment. Send your Holy Spirit to all who need him, that they might know that our hope is in Christ Jesus alone, who has promised to return again. Because he has promised, and we are waiting, not one of us will be disappointed. Amen. Whenever I see a sign in a restaurant men's room that states, all employees must wash their hands before returning to, to work, I think, I sure hope so. Unclean hands that handle food are nothing to take lightly. When we think about how we handle food in our own homes, perhaps there are times when we could do a better job of sanitation during food preparation. However, we are reassured by that old saying, a little dirt never hurt anybody. That may be true when it's ordinary dirt, but there are things that can hurt us when we eat them. Every time we have a recall on bagged fresh spinach, it emphasizes how important it is to keep the food we eat clean. Usually no cause is determined for the contamination, but among the possibilities are contaminated equipment or even unclean hands. Proper washing and handling are critical when dealing with food that is distributed to many places. Unclean hands in the wrong place can bring severe sickness or even death. Did the Jewish leaders have a valid point when they spoke to Jesus about the sanitation practices of his disciples? They might if they were truly concerned about the health of the disciples. However, they were concerned about something else, and Jesus knew it. Look at their words in our text for today. The Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, Why do your, your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? The Pharisees were not talking about dirty hands. Instead, they were talking about making distinctions. They judged people by what they saw on the outside. They excluded those who did not fit their numerous and demanding rules, rules handed down through the years. Jesus did not play their game. Instead of bowing to their demands, he explained Scripture to them. Jesus explains that the observance of outward religious ceremonies does not make a person clean before God, nor does lack of observance make him unclean before God. Instead, Jesus establishes that what comes from a corrupt heart from inside a person defiles that person. To lay aside God's commandments in favor of people's traditions changes fellowship with God into a futile religion which can neither cleanse nor save. The traditions that are intended to benefit become snares that trap their followers. When does tradition get in the way of discipleship? It gets in the way when we make tradition a measure for faithfulness. When the worthiness of others is judged by how well they keep our traditions, then we have lost sight of the real measure of a person's soul. The real measure is held by God. He is the one who sees the heart and the wickedness that lies within. We face danger when we are more concerned about accusing others than assessing our own sinfulness. God does not measure us by how clean our hands are compared to our neighbor. The list of wrongs, the dirt we gather on another person, carries no weight with God. Instead, he looks at all the people the same. When we choose to hang on to the dirt we have on someone else, it only makes our hands dirty, defiled. God does not hang on to the dirt of our lives. Instead, he has taken all that dirt that clings to us and has piled it on his son. By his sacrificial death, by the nails driven through his hands on the cross, Jesus has removed all the dirt that has filled our lives. How is this good news brought to us? It is brought to us when we are washed in baptism. As the water is poured over our outside, the Spirit cleanses us on the inside. 
There we receive the washing of regeneration and renewal. Our sins are forgiven and faith is given to us in Jesus. So we have life in us. All that has been procured by Christ's substitutionary death is conveyed to us in this washing of regeneration. Then, in this state of inside-out cleanliness, Jesus makes honest from the heart discipleship possible. We don't have to pretend anymore that we somehow make ourselves clean. Instead, being freed from the fear of condemnation by God's commands or human rules, we worship and serve with a joyful and willing heart. We bind ourselves to God and one another in humble and loving service. So how do we deal with the person who refuses to see their shortcomings? In Aesop's fables, the wind and sun prepared to make a person shed his coat. The wind used its violence and force to tear off the coat, but the person only wrapped the coat tighter. The sun, however, used a different approach. It gradually used its warmth upon the person until the coat was shed voluntarily. The gentle and gradual warmth of Christ's love brings about change much more effectively than intimidation or force. These words remind us that God's Holy Spirit brings about change from the inside. Just as our hearts need to be cleansed, so also does the Holy Spirit bring us to understand God's will for us. We need time to think through things and realize God knows what He is doing and that He is faithful to His word of promise. It is He who changes hearts, both ours and our neighbors. Washing hands that are not actually dirty does not prepare us for fellowship with God. Only through God's merciful forgiveness are defiled hands and hearts joined to Christ. The loving and gentle words we speak to each other reflect the joy in our hearts that this cleansing brings. Because Jesus died for you, you are bodily prepared to join him at his heavenly table. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please join me as we pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by hearing God's word. If you are able to attend local services, I invite you to worship with our congregations. If you're in the Madison area, you can join us at St. John Lutheran Church at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Or if you're in the Tilden area, you can join us at St. Paul Lutheran Church at 1045 a.m. on Sunday mornings. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you for joining us today, and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.